I'm John Galante. I am the president of AE Ventures. I am uh, thrilled to welcome you all here for uh, our kickoff session for the high volume track of sessions within the Tech Home Builder brand. Uh, what I've got up on screen here is a little bit about our mission on the Tech Home Builder side of things. The, I, I, I kind of um, cut the uh, I, I bucket the benefits in two major areas, offers and process. And what we're trying to do is get you to expand and improve both offers and process as it pertains to home technology. And so when we talk about offers, part of what we're looking at there is this fancy word taxonomy. It's basically the classification system. It's a set of um, categories that help you think in an organized fashion about what you could possibly do with technology. We actually talk about this being uh, something that you can use as a merchandise perspective in terms of uh, laying out the categories of offers that you have. But we want you to understand every all the products that are available and that this goes beyond the low voltage and electronics, which will be a large part of our focus for this panel, but it goes beyond into a lot of the mechanical and electrical systems and even major appliances, the way we look at the tech home. The, uh, room by room is another way we encourage you to look at tech because you've got activities and purposes for rooms and different types of technology are, in, is, are enhancements to that. Let's see if I got control again. No, I don't. <laughs> um, and and another way we, we um, uh, ask you to look at technology is, um, we call it surging and emerging applications. And that, that's basically about playing the trends, right? Certain things become hot or on the horizon at various times, and how are you aware of that and making an assessment as to how you wanna play the trends? And then the, the, the other area beyond the offers and expanding and improving your offers, is the process side of things. And I think this has been something that's been ignored historically. We've talked a lot about product to builders and we haven't really embraced all of the process supports that you all need to make technology a successful category for you. But the first piece is strategic intent, right? And, and that's about what do you wanna do with tech? And I think for a long time, we've talked about tech as a competitive differentiator purpose of this panel is for us to get beyond that and start talking about it as a real money maker. I think we're at that stage in the evolution that that can become a strategic intent for you with, with regard to technology. Sales and marketing is another place where we like to try to work with you. A sales and marketing is another area and I, I like to look at this two ways. There's one way is if you're going to make an investment in technology, standards, options, however you've made that investment. How do you get lift overall for your homes and for your communities by the fact that you've got a tech play? And then on the option side of things, how are you going to asset the marketing and the sales process so that you get robust take rates for the different technology packages that you offer? Um, the uh, design and production uh, side is what goes next. And uh, when we get to, I'm gonna just jump in here. When we get to our third session of this program, which I will not be moderating, it'll be Sean Weiner, we're gonna talk about formal design and engineering of technology, having a technology layer in your construction drawings. John, you're gonna be part of that panel, um, so that um, we can have more cost-effective, execution on the job site so that we could do things more aesthetically so that we can show the buyer why they're paying a differential for an installed and built-in solution versus something that they might get at retail and slap on. Um, the, I'm gonna go back here. Um, the last two squares are something I think that's been problematic for home technology for years, but a lot of the players on this panel are doing a great job on, which is the, the user experience, 
right? So it starts with the onboarding and the initial education and those quick refreshes, and then it's the long-term support. So we don't want technology to be a net negative on your net promoter score. We want it to be a positive. That takes planning, it takes the right sort of partners. So those are the process areas that we like to pulse on uh, with Tech Home Builder. And, and then just jumping ahead to the overall program uh, for the next two and a half days. Right here, we're tackling this idea of smart home as a profit center, which I think speaks to the strategic intent piece. We've got technology for gathering in private rooms. I saw Janet from Shea Homes here is gonna be on that panel, but that uh, addresses that room by room approach to expanding and improving your offers. We talked a little bit about the tech layer and construction drawings, the surging and emerging applications. This is 10 pounds in a five pound bag. I don't know whether we're gonna get through all 12. I have a lot of slides, we have to cut them down, <laughs> but that will speak to that playing the trends idea. And then um, the other piece at the very end uh, is about uh, artificial intelligence and how it uh, may start to change the game on the smart home. And that's just a key enabling technology that I think is gonna cut across all product categories. So that's our, our, our plan for the next two and a half days in terms of the five sessions. Um, this is some uh, quick research, or it's, it was just pulled together here recently. Um, our account manager who calls on builders is doing a lot of research looking at your websites to understand how strongly you're promoting, whether you have offers and how strongly you're promoting them. And um, we do that across seven, five or six um, home technology categories and some digital solutions categories and such. But we're just able to do some analysis on a relatively small sample, about 120 companies. But this is really interesting in terms of who's promoting a strong offer. And smart home security is really our topic today. And we can see uh, the big guys <laughs> are doing a lot with it. And the regional or less than a billion dollar a year companies are not doing as much. This is still the most popular and, and, and uh, common category for builders to be offering um, a play in, but it's, um, it's interesting the disparity, disparity between the haves and the have nots or the do's and the do nots uh, that come up on this, on this slide. So that's, that's my overview. And now we're gonna dive into this topic of smart home as a profit center. This session is sponsored by alarm.com in Madison. And Adria will talk uh, a little later about alarm.com. But here's our, um, our plan for the session. You can see we've got a great um, lineup. Uh, we've got, uh, in alphabetical order, we've got Barrett Davis, uh, who's the president and founder of Enter Now, which is a self-guided tour operator. And you've got probably three or four other businesses that I'm not 100% aware of, but he's a serial entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur who's really got one of the key plays in self-guided tours. We've got Cassidy Daybell, who's with uh, Johnson Controls Inc. slash Qualsys slash DSC. Slash, There's slash. a lot of slashes. <laughs> uh, so uh, she's been a point person for builder relationships uh, for that company for a number of years. Uh, we have Alan Dossey, who's with Homebound. He's out of Houston, Texas. Homebound is, I, I'm gonna, we're gonna hear more about what Homebound is, but I think you're a newer company that's fast growing. And you've got a lot of experience in some more traditional names, but uh, applying your expertise to this newer company that's trying to grow fast, and I'm sure is growing fast. We have um, April Maloney right next to me, who's the VP of Sales for Guardian Protection, and uh, on point for the builder program uh, that is, is so strong and has been so strong for so many years for Guardian. And then Madison uh, Bowles Saab, <laughs> the bulls disappeared, but it came back to my memory. Madison, who's on point on the builder relationships for Alarm.com and wearing an Alarm.com colored blazer today. Very Have to nice. Represent. So, yeah. so uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to cover a variety of topics here that speak to this issue of how can 
uh, home technology or that smart home security piece in particular be profitable for builders. And it's going to be a set of serial presentations. And then Alan's very entertained by this idea that he's going to give hot takes, you know, like somebody on an ESPN show uh, at the conclusion of each of these presentations. You're the Greek course. Let's put it in a more high-end esoteric way. You're the Greek course representing the voice of the builders up here. So take your responsibilities seriously, will you? OK. <laughs> And uh, so we'll, we'll go uh, session by session, and then I'll do a little, uh, we'll hear, hear from Alarm.com and Adria, uh, Madison's uh, colleague, and then I'll do a little wrap up, and that'll be it for our first session. With that, I'm handing the magic wand to you, April. Thanks, John. Uh, and, and, and let me just talk, <laughs> say, say a little bit about Guardian, because um, uh, probably made the earliest and biggest investment in working with builders of all of the security integration firms out there. Uh, years ago with the acquisition of Ranger American, which was, this was the company that did the structured wiring can installation in all of the South. Mm -hmm. And you guys- and quite a few branches. For and sure. you guys made a great play right around the time the building market was cratering and you bought that entity and really established the footprint and foundation for what you've been doing with builders for years. But uh, that was kind of visionary on Bill Graham's part and Russ Sersosimo's part. And uh, everyone smiles when they say Russ Sersosimo's <laughs> name. Entertain, never entertaining character. Anyway, with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank All right. You. Thanks, John. Yep. Um, like John said, I'm April Maloney, um, Vice President of Sales at Guardian. Um, and yes, Guardian has seems like they've been in the builder business since the beginning of time. Um, but we uh, are fortunate enough that we have 10 uh, branch locations with brick and mortar um, and had the path paved for us um, acquiring Ranger American. I think it was 2008. I'm looking to my friends over there. Um, and so that sort of put us on the map and then we kept it going and replicated that in all of our own branches. So we work, um, I mean, just round numbers with, uh, I used to say about 130 builders. Um, Guardian had just made a recent acquisition, um, if anybody recognizes the name of uh, Vintage Security. Mm. They were in the Maryland, D.C. area, uh, and so that's really helped us with density, and they were strictly uh, low-voltage integrator with monitored security, so uh, we acquired about 75 builders through them in a really small, condensed space. Um, they do a little more semi-custom, custom work. Um, so while it sounds like a lot of builders, um, some of them only have a couple houses a year, but um, that's really good for us and good for them um, that they have that sort of signature line in the semi-custom world. Yeah. When John asked me to speak on um, you know, the profit profitability for builders um, with smart technology, um, I mean, this is what we do and this is how we go to market and try to create value for builders. Um, and so my team's over here and they help me with some of these slides and just the things we say all the time um, when we're prospecting or trying to talk to builders. But, you know, there's a lot of myths, right? So technology is not a priority. Um, we completely disbelieve that. Um, we believe that it's the exact time that home buyers that are building want technology while their walls are open. It's the perfect opportunity for them to purchase it themselves. Um, the builders don't have to do standards. People who want to have the perfect home and their perfect new build, they're, they're willing to invest in that, especially from a technology perspective. And then the myth that home buyers want DIY. So the challenge with DIY is that we have to compete in the space. It's out there. Um, but even in our strategy plan, we believe that there's a strong desire for professionally installed smart home technology. Um, sort of let the people who are good at it do it the right way. Um, and then <laughs> this is probably one that we get at us all the time. It's what the obstacle that we have to overcome. Electrical contractors can do the work cheaper. Um, we don't need low voltage integrators. We have electrician, he's on site, we'll have the electrician do it. Um, this probably is the one that's the most sensitive for us. Um, and it, it's probably true to a certain aspect. If you're just saying the basics, are the basics cheaper if you're gonna have the electrician do it? Um, but integrators can sell additional option items to your home buyers and we can install those options and that's where you get some really meaningful revenue and profit. Um, and the electricians, they just don't wanna be in that business. They're not trying to be salespeople, they're electricians and that's what they do really well. Yeah. Let me just interject for one second there. I mean, I think we've had a session where we've talked about this on the 
back end uh, support is like, you tend to look at your integrators for what are they technically capable of, but you also have to look at these soft skills mm -hmm. of assessing needs, of selling, of training, of supporting, in addition to those technical skills, right? And that's where the typical electrical contractor really falls down. They don't have those soft skills to present a range of options or really identify those needs. I'm not even sure it's the space they want to be in. Yeah. They're, they're two totally different spaces. I mean, listen, we all need an electrician. I, I lobby all the time, maybe we should get an electrical side because then everybody would meet with us. But, but you, so you need them, you definitely need them. Um, but you'd need to fold it in with an integrator to be able to deliver what a company like Guardian can deliver. Yep. And then just smart home technology is not profitable. I mean, it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, as I work through it, I just want to share some sort of, we call them the headline numbers on just how much we pay to different size builders, whether it's high volume, luxury end, um, and just our overall numbers and what we end up paying back to builders and rebates that we created revenue for. So um, John and I went round and round, but we broke, the, we did, we went round and round. <laughs> Um, but we broke it into a couple things, and, and I like where you went with it. Um, and uh, my coworker Rich is in the audience. He took it in a similar direction. Um, and so the sort of the theme is you have to be with the right partner to do this. Um, you have to be able to sell the right products, and you have to have the right process. Um, and if you do those, it can create the profitability. Um, and so I, we believe what partners drive success. Um, maybe just even speaking what you said about the electricians and it's not a knock on any of my electrician friends. Like I said, we all need them, but you have to find a partner who understands relationships and partnerships. Um, we, we have different segments, not just the builder business at Guardian. Um, and we say so many times in boardroom meetings or other places when we're talking about people we do business with, um, it has to work for both sides. That's a partnership, not just when someone says, I need you to do this for the lowest cost and blah, 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 and pushes it down on you. It has to work for both sides or you, you have to walk away and it doesn't work. Um, but so that's where we really believe in relationships and talking about how can we create value for through our partnerships. But true partners in this space, um, you have to find somebody who has the capacity to handle production schedule. Um, I mean, they have to understand your business. Uh, we talk a lot, there's probably not that many integrators of Guardian size that are left out there that do what we do. Um, there are a couple and they do them really well. They're not all national players, so that can be tricky. Um, but it just isn't anybody. I'll hear somebody who I'll hear go, oh, we're getting in the dealer business or in the builder business. You are? So I, we just know the back end process. You have to, somebody has to understand your business and they have to have the infrastructure um, to meet your needs from a production schedule to you know, change orders, to PO processes, to having trucks that can show up on time in between the trades that they need to show up for. Yeah, it's um, kind of the Hippocratic oath, do no harm situation, <laughs> right? True, yeah. true. Um, and then you know, a, a good partner wants to be involved in the sales process and they understand your sales process. Uh, that we wanna maximize opportunities to increase home buyer satisfaction and we wanna be able to drive builder revenue. Um, the best way that we can do that is when we can get in front of those customers and sell the options that they wanna buy from us so that we can create that profitability for the builders. Um, the, the one thing, and it maybe is a little out of order, um, but we really understand a good integrator is really gonna understand uh, your sales process and value the customer experience it's another obstacle that we get that we have to overcome in that we understand that nobody wants their sales process disrupted. Um, nobody wants it to be a reflection on them if they put a tricky trade or a tricky integrator in front of somebody, right? It's a reflection on the person that has that initial sale. Um, Guardian, Gar Guardian's been in the builder program for a long time. We have our own basic customers. Um, we have our own central station that monitors security customers. We have 250,000 customers that we hold on to. So we value that as well. And we care about them and we want them to stay. So we understand the value in customer experience and customer satisfaction. And when you say you understand the builder's sales process, you mean the 15, 20 different sales processes are out there, right? I mean, this is like, there's not one process. I think that's one of the mistakes these people who say, I'm gonna do builder business make is they think there's one process and one program. And I have described the home building market as the most heterogeneous market on the planet. 
So you have to be able to deal with the variety, right? So if I say we have 200 builders now with our recent acquisition, there's a good chance we have 180 different programs. <laughs> They're shaking their heads. I mean, it's just, it's, and that's okay, but you have to understand that and you have to know that. You have to be able to have an infrastructure to manage those different pricing schedules, who sees what. You just, you, it's, it's you not have something capacity you capacity for complexity, right? You do, yeah. you do, you do. Um, and then the other thing from a, you know, what drives success from a partnership is just effective communication and transparency. Um, so we have regional builder managers in all of our areas. Um, they sit down, they provide results on a community level, a parent level, um, area level, however, however the builders need to see it for, you know, their higher ups and, and what they need to deliver. And we share everything. We call it a sort of a skinny trend file, but that's just because it's builder facing and um, we're trying to make it, you know, in their terms of what's important to them. But we're open. We want, you know, the rooftops that you share. We want to give them back to you. We want to show you how much we sold. We want to show you how much revenue we created for you. We actually want to show you how well we're selling. And if you were to put us in front of more people, that it will just make you more. We're, we're just trying to always be like, hey, here's what the business is, whether you call it a business overview or just sort of that transparency and reporting. Um, but it really helps create growth when both What's people the understand. What's on that? Is it like a quarterly deal or monthly or what? I, I think depends, it really probably. depends on the builder, but I mean, our teams, you know, we attend all the sales and production meetings, but to have really sit down like a quarterly meeting and talk about the business, it's probably more on that cadence of quarterly. Okay. Any questions from anybody? I don't want to jump ahead if there are any. <laughs> Quarterly at the review time. <laughs> okay. In person. Good question. In person. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about just our process as well, because it's one of the P's that's real significant in the profitability. Um, our process at Guardian is to create as much value for both of us, builder and an integrator in Guardian, and also increase as much customer satisfaction as possible. Um, we want to create the opportunity for them um, to get everything that they want in their home when the walls are open. Um, and just, you know, the, the handoff between uh, the builder and an integrator like Guardian uh, really helps with that. You can see in the pictures, right, that, you know, we're obviously there through the whole construction phase. Um, we understand time constraints in the sales process and how to meet those and how quickly we have to get in front of home buyers to make their selections and do mortgage roll-ins. So, um, again, it's, it's not something somebody can just snap their finger and get into and then, you know, create profitability and satisfaction. So from a process standpoint, um, and again, I'm probably jumping around, so some of this I may have said, um, it's extremely important for builders to be involved in the planning and the pricing of the options that you would want an integrator to sell to your customers. Um, you know, from, uh, you know, home networking, I mean, it's so big these days from a technology perspective, um, all the way through smart home and convenience and the ability to drive everything to one app. Um, I don't want to steal Madison slides, but um, you know the the ability. I, I keep equating smart home technology to convenience and people's likeness to want to be as convenient as possible. That they want to touch one button at the end of the night that locks their doors and turns their lights off, and if an animal runs on their back porch, it will notify them and all of the possible things that it can do, as well as all the behind the wall stuff from home, whole home audio in the rooms that you want it to heavy, heavy networking. I mean, and just if we think where we've gone to have work from home and cyber school things and just whether you're not working from home during the day, people are signing on at night and streaming and it's just don't miss the opportunity for your home buyers to have the opportunity to set it up the way that they want. And in, in them paying for it, it creates revenue for the builders. Um, and then, you know, I mentioned this a little bit, but prepping the builder sales team um, to provide the basic education and, and arrange an educated handoff, just understanding the value, right? Rich, you use a couple examples. 
you know, we have a national builder in two locations. The handoff with one is amazing. They're like, you have to meet with Guardian. You don't want to miss your opportunity. They're going to call you. And at one other one, they're like, oh, you don't really, it's okay. I mean, you're probably short on time. So just this, it creates something completely different and the education and the, the sales uh, people with the builder to understand what we do and how much value we can bring as well. It's not all at our levels, right? It's at the levels that they're handing off and talking with those home buyers through their process. Uh, and then coordinating to meet sales and construction schedules. Um, you know, we understand that process really, really well. Um, we have a whole sales ops organization. If you're going to get involved with anybody that doesn't say they have that, you should walk away. <laughs> There's no way to mince words on that. It's a heavy lift um, for integrators and they have to be prepared. Um, and then structuring post occupancy activations or post close. Um, so that's something that's really changed, I would say, in the last four or five years um, with. Uh, builders putting some standards in in automation devices and and that can create some revenue on the back end as well with additional security activations when people move into the homes it's not just on front end options um, so whatever your program looks like or whatever wherever you want to be able to create revenue um, there's different ways to go at it so you know don't be afraid to just bring up like hey here's what I'm thinking about um, and then make sure you know somebody is meeting with you. The, I mean, it's valuable. You, you, you're putting your customers in front of someone else and you're allowing them to be in your sales process. They should be able to feed that information back to you with just open transparency. And, and if something isn't working, they should be able to pivot or be able to provide suggestions and things that they've seen work with other builders in other areas. And I mean, if they're the experts, they see this with other programs, they should be able to guide you a little bit to get you where you need to be or what you were thinking from a revenue perspective. Good stuff. So just to touch on some of the products, I break them into categories. This is just how we go to market. Um, but the I have the average markup and average rebate that we pay with security options. So. For an example, security system. That's security system and all smart devices from thermostat to lock to water valves to video devices. Um, when we sell that uh, to the customer, to the home buyers, um, generally what we see is a 30% markup, then that creates revenue back to the builders in that process. So that's what I would call a smart home security system mm -hmm. because it's got those completely basic connected. automation features. Mm -hmm. yeah. And completely connected. Yeah. You can keep the value in it is for them to be able to connect everything into one app yeah. where they can see all of their things and create all rules and notifications and yeah. all types of things. That's the convenience yeah. of smart home. In, in the pricing, the margin there at 30% is a a little lower than the others because it needs to be to be competitive with some of the other stuff that people are seeing in the we have to compete with it yeah it doesn't yeah, so it, so you, you you can't have some big margin that really prices it way out of whack with what somebody sees if you online. sit down with a home buyer and they see prices and they think well I don't have to buy that right now I could buy that later I know it probably doesn't cost that so there's some balance in here on what, how you price it, sort of back to my slide before on yeah. prepping and planning of, you, you have to keep it balanced. Yeah, but uh, people want this, and if a builder abdicates that opportunity, they get none of the money, and they don't really satisfy the consumer mm -hmm. either at the same time. Correct. Um, and then structured wiring is, you know, a little bit more of a markup in home audio uh, full home theater, a uh, little bit of a, mar a higher markup as well, because you have the opportunity to. If they're going to go get a different contractor to do that after the fact, you know that that's not as much of an apples to apples comparison as trying to um, shop security and home automation after. Are the you fact. able to sell speaker upgrades? Are you able to get people in to demo speaker upgrades? Because that's where the margin is in the audio, right? Mm -hmm. Those speaker upgrades. Yeah. Yeah, we need to do more of that. What do we? What were we just calling it? <laughs> serious? Are you a serious listener? Uh, Who isn't? Are you a serious listener? Yeah. Right. So not necessarily good, better, best, but are you a serious listener? Oh yeah. I mean, my it's husband. The good, better, best is the marketing terminology. <laughs> serious is more <laughs> consumer centric. Good thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then monitoring rebates. So obviously. Um, you know, true partnerships, you know, we have to both have a side that creates value for us. And so, you know, we're hoping that the customers opt to get home security professionally monitored. And when we get that, then we pay a per unit monitoring rebate. And that's whether they took that 
pre-construction or whether they took that after they were in their home. We treat that whole builder program holistically. So whenever they decide to partner with Guardian, we would pay that rebate back. Um, and then I just gave some... some That's one where uh, an educated handoff could help too, mm -hmm. right? Like there's a lot sure, of... Uh, sure monitoring guilt out there. Thanks to Jamie Siminoff and Ring telling everybody that <laughs> monitoring fees are the devil incarnate, right? It's, <laughs> it's This is how you finance a good long-term customer uh, experience. Not only how you finance it, but how you have the technical tethering to that system to really understand what's going on and to service it. So like, let's figure out how there can be some basic education about that stuff so it doesn't sound like it's just somebody being taken for a ride. And there's a trust factor in that if the builder is willing to put an integrator in front of their home buyer, there's a trust factor from the person that's buying to yep. say, like, I'm more likely to buy right now. I have more, they're putting me in front of it. This is the, these are the selections that I have. Yep. So sort of back to that partnership piece. Uh, and just, I gave the, the latest take rates that we have when we sit down with the customers um, from a security structured wire. So you mean angle. nobody, you mean people actually want this stuff? They do. Oh, okay. They do. I'm surprised. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, so just a little on Guardian. Um, I, I mentioned it already. I put the slide on here, but then I jumped the gun um, on just Guardian stake in the game for we value the customer experience. Um, we own our own central station. Um, we have over 250,000 customers, 10 branch locations. Um, you know, we're a diamond central station. We've won central station of the year a couple times. I mean, I just always say best in class. I mean, if it's, if we do something well, it's this and low voltage. <laughs> um, and I always say, well, that's good because those are probably two of the most important things. Um, but we do, we monitor the customers at Guardian and just, speaks to that we really care about these customers. Um, so video surveillance, hope you don't use the same slide. Okay. Um, so all of the, uh, the people want cameras. I mean, there's no better way to say it. Uh, we also, at Guardian, we have an inside sales group that takes calls from our, our marketing you know, spend. And nine times out of 10, if you pull a call, people want cameras. Um, and they preferred hardwired cameras. It's gonna communicate and connect better. So that's the opportunity when the walls are open. Um, and with video analytics, so the, the ability to know that who came and went, car, person, animal, to be notified. I mean, just my back camera, I have it set up between 12 and six for any animal because it shouldn't be back there. And if I see something in the morning where it tells me something's there, I'm like, what? what's there? So just people want to see whatever they want to see, um, but they do, they want to see their kids come home, they want to see their packages delivered. This is what people want. Don't miss the boat on, on any video devices, whether it's a video doorbell with you know, two-way capacity to talk, whether it's something to notify you of who's on your property. Um, people want video, for sure. So one of the great things about the technology industry is when over time, you get way more performance for your dollar. Mm -hmm. Here's a category where the cameras that are available for a couple thousand dollars that would fully outfit a lot of homes would have been $25,000 <laughs> 15 years ago, literally. Analytics was, whoa, over the top. All these cameras, you had low definition cameras probably would have been 25,000. So. It's just the value, and people want it, and the value is absolutely there, right? We should have showed a live feed. We should have showed live feed. Mm -hmm. Next time. Okay, next time. <laughs> All right, next time. Um, and, I mean, I'll go over this quickly. Just don't miss the opportunities. Um, they want to design stuff behind the walls when the walls are open. I mean, don't miss the opportunity. But this is probably closest to everybody in the room. Uh, and then the whole, whole home audio, which I spoke about already. So... With the right partnership, with the right process, with the right products, um, how much smart home profitability can you create? Um, so this, these are just round numbers. Um, we pulled them from our last quarter's uh, rebate report. Um, again, a lot of builders. So if you take it over, and I probably don't even have vintage folded in here, so you take it over 125, 135, um, about $519 average rebate per rooftop. Um, so Whatever you're putting in as standards, you can offset it even with that amount of rebate. 
Um, you and know, there's no upfront investment to get to that yield, right? I only mean, to say you want time. to be with Guardian. The time, and, yeah, but <laughs> but there's not a dollar investment upfront that's no. required with that, okay? No, I mean, the, the investment is the partnership, right? The investment for that to work, the investment is you have to say, I trust Guardian, I've done my research, and I would feel comfortable putting them in front of my home buyers in the process. Yeah. I mean, that's the investment. Yep. Um, and so just some other, you know, we took the same quarterly report and said like, hey, for the high volume builders, how much did we pay to them um, on average? So that's an average, that's a per builder in the quarter um, of what we paid to high volume builders. And then same thing for what we would consider our luxury or semi-custom custom, um, what we paid to those builders. Obviously it's a lot less rooftops when you get in front of them, but we, but likelihood to buy. I'm not good at math, but six, four quarters is 60,000 a quarter is almost a quarter of a million dollars. It's almost, a lot of right? money. I mean, I just headline numbers. I mean, I brought the rebate report form. Can't necessarily put it up there with the names on there, okay. but I mean, just for round numbers, and this is the fourth quarter, we paid $675,000 back to builders. Uh, now again, 135 builders, all doing different number of rooftops all have a different process with Guardian and how much they're willing to put us in front of their customers and and the types of homes right you guys all know I'm not telling you anything you don't know um, you know there are people building homes that have a big pocketbook to buy and then there's high volume that maybe they don't have as much but but they still do buy um, I mean the top one on our list is a high volume builder in San Antonio um, we pay more than the 60,000. I mean, it's a lot. Um, so when you have, and, and they have a really good partnership with us and a really good process. So when you see how it works, um, you, can, you can see it come together and you can really see the value and, and you're always trying to navigate it to make sure that you can create the right amount of value for everybody. Good. So in summary, um, you know, the right partner will drive significant revenue to builders. Um, the right process will maximize the revenue um, and the right products will increase the customer satisfaction and will create a lot of revenue for builders. So yes, there's profitability in smart home. Good to hear. <laughs> Let's hear what the builder thinks, the Greek chorus on the other side. Alan, tell us a little bit more about Homebound and your role before you jump in with your hot take. Okay, I've been preparing for this hot take now for no, just <laughs> suspense. Is uh, building so, Homebound up. is a is a national home builder. Uh, we got our start in 2018 uh, as a response to a need to rebuild after the devastating wildfires in Northern California. So that was our first um, really inset into home building was to rebuild uh, volume production homes in areas that were affected by natural disaster. Uh, we did move down uh, the coast of California and entered Southern California after that. And our third market that we entered was the Bahamas. Um, our CEO is actually <laughs> very like not specific as far as where we go. So Bahamas was devastated by Hurricane Dorian and we rebuilt after Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas and then we jumped into um, Texas and Texas was not a natural disaster market. It was a affordable housing disaster market. <laughs> so we opened up in Austin and then Houston and Dallas. Uh, we also um, jumped into Colorado after the wildfires in Northern Denver. And then uh, over into Fort Myers Beach after Hurricane Ian. So we uh, kind of focus on rebuilding after natural disasters, production building. Basically we don't rebuild the home that was destroyed, but we give them a home quickly on uh, property that they already own for the most part. Uh, it's very different than the production home builder who develops their own land in the community and, and builds the homes and they have to, they're still owning the land. So basically our homes are already sold for the most part by the people who own the land. So it's a very different business model. Before that, I did work in the national production home building industry for 20 years and I wanted to try something different. 
and try to make Homebound the largest home builder in the world, which is our aspiration here. And, well, uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty, that's a BHAG. The mission is big, uh, hairy, audacious goal. To provide a home <laughs> for anybody, anywhere. Um, so it's basically a, a very, is a tech oriented home uh, builder. We design our own software for um, managing the building of the home and, and everything behind the scenes is all done by our own proprietary software. So that's a little introduction about Homebound. What do you think? <laughs> My take on, on Guardian profitability. Yeah, I feel like I'm more. on Shark Tank. <laughs> yeah, right. Are you going to take it or are you <laughs> not going to take it? I mean, obviously, this primarily comes from my experience working with production home builders and the purchasing capacity. And, 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 you know, I think that you have to understand who your target buyer is. And one of the things you mentioned is there's like 200 different ways that programs, and that's probably because there's at least 200 different types of buyers. And historically, builders have focused on specific clients for specific types. You know, you have your luxury custom home builders and you have your starter home builders. Homebound does everything, by the way, from build for rent to high-end multi-million dollar luxury homes. So we have to kind of orient our program at Homebound towards different types of buyers as well. When you talk about meeting with buyers, well, with today's interest rates, a lot of people are not buying dirt. They're buying completed specs, mm -hmm. kind of like, hey, now is now a good time to go ahead and buy the, buy the home. So those decisions as to what goes into the home behind the walls mm -hmm. has to be made by the builder and not by the customer mm -hmm. because there is no customer. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes like so important for the builder to understand the customer. Mm -hmm. And from my perspective, if the, buy, if the builder's like, determining what type of flooring or what type of countertops goes in the home. And they also need to determine what type of home automation needs to go in the home, same way. You're not gonna try to put the top tier home automation package in the home that also gets level zero flooring. Right, right. <laughs> so they have the, the customer has to, or the builder has to understand what their, their target customer is. And I think that's like the key mm -hmm. yeah. to, make, to being successful. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good point on the spec. Um, we've certainly seen a shift in that um, just even since, I would say since COVID, and I hate to use COVID as an excuse, um, but it did change a lot of things. And so we have seen that. Um, the company that we acquired, Vintage, um, they actually do a better job um, than Guardian does today in getting with the builder to build out those specs and give different packages. So we're hoping to learn a little bit from them um, and adopt some of their practices because, you know, we used to say was, you know, 10 or 20% spec, I mean, it's it's much higher and it's certainly much higher in areas. Um, so we don't wanna just, we either, we don't wanna just do low voltage work without any other opportunities or opportunities even to meet with them post-close. So when the builders are putting smart home technology and as standards even in specs and we can help design, again, whatever the serious listening is for the levels of, of spec, um, you know, that helps at the back end for conversion and creating a monitoring rebate. All right, we're gonna have to leave it a one hot take and one response. <laughs> I think you're competing in the Shark Tank. <laughs> and let's turn it over to Madison. I'm moving on. So I have been with Alarm.com for the last nine years, where six of those I've spent managing our builder channel. And Alarm.com, of course, is, the, is a smart home platform that really combines a lot of the services and, and features and devices that April was talking about and actually work in partnership with all of the people here on the panel today. Um, but to, to talk about smart home as a profit center, I think it's important to think about this in kind of two different facets. One is how can you, as, as April was talking about, really utilize the devices that you are either optioning for customers or standardizing in the homes to create new profit centers for your business. But at the same time, also looking at technology and how it can minimize expenses um, prior to the home buyers actually moving in. So our goal with technology is actually reducing net operating expenses through these devices. So we really want to unlock programs that really target the key pain points that builders are having during the construction process, one of those being theft, 
which most of the time occurs, you know, right when um, those important things are being delivered into the home, like appliances and those high ticket items. So being able to have a solution there that can provide notifications and potentially dispatch emergency response on site there to the home can help mitigate those issues. Secondly, with energy management, you know, there's a large bill there that's attributed to construction power. And so through our solution, really having the scalability to really across the portfolio of homes that builders have, um, tie in thermostat schedules to reduce those overall expenditures. Whenever water devices are being installed, having the ability to also not only uh, from a home buyer perspective and reduce insurance premiums, but even before they move in, if we can help mitigate those issues, um, ultimately reducing um, expenditures for, for builders. And then lastly, and I don't want to still bear it slender either, but you know, tying in uh, solutions to generate leads for self-guided tours. You know, there's a lot of different ways that buyers want to ultimately um, view homes and, and buy homes, and so having the flexibility there to drive more foot traffic through those homes through our collective solutions is ultimately going to um, drive more profits uh, more quickly for builders as they're selling these homes. Madison, the front end, this list uh, loss and risk mitigation stuff, I mean, that's relatively new offer for Alarm.com, right? Just in the last couple of years? It is, yeah. yes. So it's, it's actually all based on our community management platform, which you're yeah. seeing here. So the yeah. idea being that we have kind of that one-stop solution that allows builders to collectively monitor their entire portfolio or their all of their assets across um, their portfolio of homes. So if they can bring things together, whether it be their model homes or their vacant inventory homes, um, it's a, a great way for them to increase their awareness of what's going on across their properties. Yeah. And security, tying into the theft that you mentioned, is included with this solution. So without their need, their need to be Wi-Fi um, within the homes prior to close, you can activate security, you can tie in things like locks, thermostats, even lighting to drive um, more efficiencies across your business. I know it hasn't been around a long time, so I don't know what your, your take rate is on it, but it just makes so much sense, right? Like those, who doesn't, Alan, I hope you want to take care of those things. We were actually like just talking were. about this yeah. before. <laughs> so it just, it, it just seems like a no brainer and maybe, you know, with some more time and understanding in the market that that will be one that really takes off, I think. Totally agree. So tell us more about community management. Yeah, I mean, we really do see this as a way for builders to, you know, not only reduce their expenses, but ultimately just have more awareness of what's going on across their property. And, and to your point, John, we're really seeing a lot of production builders adopt these services across the board. You, know, A lot of them will start with having this tie into their model homes to effectively monitor that. But then once they get more accustomed to this, they're deploying it across all of their, their assets pre-close as well. Okay. And so as we think about kind of what that community management package might look like, here's just some examples of you know, where a good starting place would be and what those expanded options could be as well. So you know, if we think about, as I mentioned, they're not needing to be Wi-Fi in the home and kind of taking advantage of you know, the, the security aspect, the energy savings aspect, the self-guided tour aspect, really the, the pre-close basics bundle that I am showing here kind of fits into those stories. So you have a, the security panel there that is really acting as the, the brain or the hub of the home and connecting into these other smart home automation devices. So um, you have the, the Z-Wave door lock that you can utilize for self-guided tours, but then whenever the home is sold, it's sold with this equipment as well so that those home buyers can right away um, start utilizing that to effectively manage who's coming in and out of their home through those codes. Same thing with the, the Z-Wave thermostat. Um, kind of that core package there to help address those, those pain points. And then as we look at those, those expanded options, 
you know, lighting is definitely one that, you know, wouldn't it be nice as a builder to, at the end of the day, being able to make sure that certain lights are turned off. Maybe you have a front porch light that stays on um, throughout the evening, but being able to control those at an enterprise level, um, ultimately saving money as well, as opposed to having uh, trades or, you know, sales agents that are coming in and leaving uh, lights on, you know, throughout the weekend or bumping up or bumping down the thermostat to, um, extreme temperatures during that period as well when no one's actually in the home. And so as we think about, you know, these easy upgrades for a smart home profit center and kind of expanding on a lot of the things that April was talking about, you know, every builder is different in how they go to market. And, you know, a lot of them, there are options for um, integrators to sell services up front, um, but for some of those higher production volume builders where they've kind of stripped out a lot of those options, how can they continue to create profit centers around specific device categories? And we're seeing this today with smart home lighting, especially, um, you know, we have partnerships with companies like Deco, where it's very much a plug and play uh, solution that doesn't need to get an electrician involved. So offering customers or home buyers um, the flexibility to add in these devices um, on their own time through these upgrades that builders can, once again, make about roughly a 30% profit margin on those services. And kind of expanding that into other device categories. You know, if you're including one smart lock on the front of your home, you know, I personally at my house don't have a key. Um, so, and I know that there are a lot of other home buyers that, that want a similar uh, type of uh, feature set across their home. So offering a keyless home. And even expanding that um, into, into categories like solar where there are such used rebates and incentives there as well. So putting on my corporate uh, sustainability hat here for a minute, um, you know, as you know, the SEC is really cracking down and creating a lot of, um, you know, reasons for cost or for uh, companies today to um, reduce their carbon emissions and, and general expenses. There, you know, we really look at builders having the ability to create. Um, really future-proofing their home so that it is solar-ready, EV-ready, battery-ready, um, so that they can continue offering, uh, you know, customers really what they're going to need long-term. And this is a great way to, if you're setting them up for success uh, by creating these services, you're creating loyalty and ultimately referrals for, um, for those homeowners as well. And then also, if you think about corporate sustainability around these kind of three different services from um, an employment perspective, it's, it's great to be able to actually uh, drink your own medicine there and actually offer a lot of these same services through customized programs that we have with our partnerships uh, across the board as well. So these are profitable categories for builders as well. I mean, even just the uh, make it ready sort of stuff. It is, yes. We, we've kind of um, surveyed a lot of our ecosystem partners and builder relationships to create you know, what are these definitions for solar ready, battery ready, EV ready. And the cost for this is roughly about seven to $800 per home to make them ready in these three categories. And we have partnerships in place that can help um, minimize a lot of those costs and actually offer rebates um, to builders as part of the upgrades that are made. Kind of back to the future structured wiring thing, you know, <laughs> future ready. Uh, well, if I could interject. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Solar ready and EV ready are pretty much required by, you know, large municipalities already. So the builders are already doing that. The profit is in the selling the trim out mm -hmm. and the actual EV charger and then the solar yeah, charger. Exactly. Yeah, or the solar panels. Yep, exactly. Yeah, we, we are seeing a lot of customers want to go to, you know, if, if builders are making it uh, ready for those services, having the option to upgrade to those is, is definitely something that builders can, kind of going back to my previous slide, the, the rebates there are so um, large that they can start taking advantage of right away. And then lastly, 
kind of pivoting a little bit to think about um, the HVAC channel. So in addition to our core security business that runs through our integrators, Alarm.com also has a subsidiary, Building 36, that focuses on the HVAC channel. And so the idea behind this concept of pro HVAC monitoring is being able to uh, allow customers to monitor the health of their HVAC system so that if there is an issue that's detected, um, HVAC professionals are able to identify that before something actually fails, which is you know, typically at the hottest or the coldest day of the year most of the time. Um, so from a, a builder perspective, um, how ultimately we are looking at um, utilizing these services in order to create additional profit centers and ultimately um, drive a better home buyer experience. I think first on the, the builder side, you know, if you are partnered with an HVAC company that is leveraging these types of services, um, ultimately utilizing them to reduce warranty or validate warranty claims um, to make sure that the equipment's been installed okay, it's performing okay, even prior to the home buyer moving in. So if you have these devices utilizing our community management dashboard that are brought in there, um, you're able to kind of reduce the pre-sale risk that's associated with um, the HVAC equipment. And then ultimately, um, you're driving and creating a better home buyer experience by being able to partner with these companies and offer these services so that they can, over the lifetime of their um, home ownership, um, have better peace of mind and, and um, be able to make sure that their system's going to be working in, uh, over that period of time. And then lastly, we really see this, once again, driving back to the profit center piece as a way for builders to partner with HVAC professionals to split revenue with those contractors and drive more profits for their business as well. Very cool. Thank you, Alan. Quick hot take, 20 yeah, seconds or less. Quick question on the HVAC side. Is, yeah. Do they have to register with Alarm.com to become a HVAC contractor? How does that work? So we have a, a network of HVAC professionals that are already part of our Building 36 network. But if you have professionals that you're already working with today, we can bring them in and have them be part of the program. And there's a fee associated with that, I would imagine. As part as being like a For a the partner. HVAC contractor. Um, there, there is a, um, similar to how Alarm.com goes to market with an RMR piece, that is, it's not a cost for them to be a partner of Alarm.com, but any of the services that they activate on Alarm.com, there would be. You know what, I actually feel like I got the best seat in the house because these ladies really <laughs> built a, real, a great foundation for what I'm going to touch on today, which is, you know, how do we leverage the smart home technology and hardware that you're investing in and putting in the home for aftermarket? Um, system expansion and turn those into profit centers. So you can see the few things we're gonna talk about, so I'll quickly fly through this. You spoke to one thing, April, that I think is really important, and that is choosing the right partners. And at Qualsys, we think that's really, Qualsys JCI, I have to make sure I, I throw the new <laughs> name in. Uh, you know, we, we agree with that. We think it's really important, so that's why we entered a partnership with Foxconn, the largest hardware manufacturer in the world. Um, we think by choosing, you know, they make the Apple i iPad, the iPhone, they source for um, lots of different big companies. And by doing that, that helps create not only quality, right, for those purchasing our product, but also that creates a confidence that you know that there's not going to be any issues down the road. We built our system on an Android platform. And why this is important is we believe that you have to future-proof your technology. And Android really creates um, the full toolkit for us. We feel confident that as technology continues to grow and these profit centers continue to open up, that we can leverage that technology to implement what we need to do along with Alarm.com. Um, and that leads me to our other partner over here. I don't really think I need to explain why. Uh, Madison did a great job of, of talking about why Alarm.com and that partnership is so important to us. We've got to be able to, well, we're a hardware company, we're also a software company, so we've got to make sure that our engineers and our partnership is very strong so that we can continue to make these products in the home a true asset. Um, and Qualcomm, la largest chip manufacturer, the chipset that we use with them really takes it so that we can take all those automation devices, so Z-Wave, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and then your cellular connection and put it on one card right in the panel. So very simple, very seamless, and it works really well. Quickly fly over this. You said it earlier as well. Um, 
we can't, I don't pretend to think I've got a cookie cutter solution that's gonna work for every builder because it just doesn't work that way. So we've got a myriad of options, whether that be no screen or all the way up to our, our very robust IQ4 panel. But the really cool thing that we've changed over the past few years, and this has really come from feedback from this channel, is we need to make these more modular, right? Whether you decide you wanna lead with security, out the gate or you wanna have just an automation platform, let's make it so that we have an easy path for any of those. So out the box, every single one of um, our panels or the heart of the home, if you will, comes automation ready. And then we make it a seamless process for integrators like Guardian to upgrade to security, whether that be with a legacy RF that you're used to seeing out in the market or with our mo more robust um, automation and enhanced security in our Power G daughter cards. Very easy to do after, after um, the, the homeowner moves in, or if you decide you want that as a profit center because we just saw the numbers, you can lead with that and it's still very inexpensive cost. Um, so this is where it gets really interesting, this in-home billboard idea or in-home messaging. Um, Madison talked to quite a few of the more traditional profit centers that we see in lights, locks, thermostats, um, but the one that, you know, the, the area that gets me the most excited and where we've been spending a lot of our time is in energy efficiency. And we've talked a little bit about that today, but imagine this, the homeowner walks in and they see a picture of their home with solar already on it with a call to action that says, you know, take advantage of your solar smart home uh, and your tax credits and scan the QR code. The QR code then leads them to whomever you're trusted and that's a very important uh, note that you made. It's gotta be a trusted partner, somebody that you wanna put in front of that homeowner that you know is credible, reliable, and they're gonna get the job done. Now we've baked in some things to make sure that that process goes seamless for you, but I'm pretty sure I saw the number 735K. I don't know about you guys, but that seems like a really great rebate to participate in. And I think that this is only gonna continue to grow. Um, and as a way of like kind of not having to get to the other slides, I'll finish this up here. Um, when we start to make the homes, as you, as you mentioned, we have to do this. We have to start making them solar ready, EV ready, uh, battery ready. You're gonna be able to continue to connect with that homeowner. Not only can you create the, or send the images that are gonna remind them of the smart home that you already put in there, we can continue to create a more comprehensive picture of what they can do with it, leading to profit centers, and then you can continue to retarget in this energy efficiency uh, world that we're playing in now. So you got the rebate on the solar, next they buy two battery cars, they need to put in an EV charger, you can retarget that and so on and so on. And we think yeah. this is just gonna to continue to grow and be a huge, huge profit center for not only our builders, but just a great addition for our homeowners, right? And doing the right thing. And, yeah. and um, we're really excited about that. So really, really interesting. Uh, show of hands, who's interested in post-occupancy revenue, more of it? Okay. I wish there were more hands up because I think there's huge opportunity. Well, I That's think you're the, you know. Not just this, but all well, over the The homeowner the trusted you to build their home, right? They trusted you to go through this extremely emotional process with. So who better to guide and direct them to these other really large purchases? Um, and and they're, I think homeowners are relying on their builders more and more to, to point them into the direction of the right partnerships. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of those products like Madison talked about, you know, the lights, locks, thermostats, very easy to turn on. The last thing I will say is that, you know, it's our responsibility as, as hardware and software manufacturers to make sure that we are doing the right integrations. Um, most recently, we've got visibility for that homeowner from start to finish of what that solar process looks like. As we all know, that's a very, can be a very lengthy process, right? So where are we in that production? What phase? How can we educate the homeowner along that journey um, so that when they want to upgrade to that next phase, they feel confident in what they had before or the, the, the how the process went before. And then lastly, we have, um, and the integrations are going to continue, but integrations with solar edge and end phase. So those are the two largest manufacturer of inverters to be able to show that production data on the panel. So the homeowner can start to understand what their home is actually producing and then how they can turn that into a profit center for themselves, right? And save money. So I'll okay. wrap it up. Awesome, really good. Alan, quick take on just post-occupancy revenues. Oh, this is uh, you know advertising to get the energy uh, ready, the solar ready, EV ready home, then fully trimmed out maybe post-close. I mean, I where are you on all that stuff real quick? I, I say there is probably there is definitely an opportunity there, and I think builders would be interested in, in 
I don't think they would turn down any post-occupancy revenue opportunity. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> I, I'm saying there's a chance. <laughs> Let's talk later. I love it when Dumb and Dumber is quoted. <laughs> Barrett, speaking, no. All right, we'll, <laughs> do, a, we'll, we'll do a two-minute drill to save the audience here. So this All will right. be quick. Harry, Lloyd, have a, Barrett, We have another panel uh, at 8 a.m. on self-guided tours, so you can definitely come back tomorrow morning. <laughs> but um, in terms of smart home, uh, just a, a simple uh, how-to on what a self-guided is a self-guided tour is that a home, a, pros, a home buyer prospect can schedule online on their website or they can show up on person while they're driving through the community. They can scan a QR code, verify their identity. They'll get a one-time use code. They'll go into the home all independent. This is exactly what they're looking for. They want self-service, they want convenience. Um, our product is available sun up till sundown, so they come a lot after work. Um, the builder is notified when a tour is booked. From an entry standpoint, like with a, like alarm.com, when we set a one-time use code for the visitor to go in, we also disarm the alarm when they leave. We track their emotion. We know where they are from a security and awareness standpoint. When they leave, we change the pin code. We also rearm the door and we'll then send the buyer like a post-tour survey. And all of that information is synced directly to the sales and marketing team. And so just some ROI benefits of self-guided tours and why we're one of the fastest growing categories in the home building space is that we increase showing hours. So our technology is deployed on thousands of thousands of spec homes. Uh, you know, it reduces the time on market. We get two to three times more leads in the door by far because we have more coverage territory. We're of self-guided tours is available when the sales team's eating dinner, when they're not there, we have more coverage on the weekend. And definitely as the communities are starting to stack up with different types of spec homes, this allows a home builder or a sales marketing team to do more with less. And that's definitely the definition of you know, our innovation that we brought to market. And there's a bunch of people that don't like to talk to people. <laughs> yeah, this, this is true. That's definitely a buyer persona. So two ways for a home shopper to tour is that they can uh, drive through the community. And there's a ton of people driving through the communities today without self-guided tours. They would just drive through and turn around. But being able to instant access to tour on, de on demand without that sales pressure gets more contracts. It creates more leads. It creates a more engaged home shopper for sure. Um, Self-guided tours are starting to implement in every type of technology that exists in the digital marketing space. So just to give you an example, Zillow and Realtor.com are going to have a high class or a self-guided tour experience this year where you can book a tour in new construction. All right, the difference between two types of self-guided tours is John calls them dumb self-guided tours and smart self-guided <laughs> tours. Um, so the bare minimum to do self-guided tours is a door lock. We have to give a code to get the people in the house. And a lot of home builders start with self-guided tours this way, whether it's a Z-Wave lock, Wi-Fi lock, offline access codes. We get them in the door, they get that great experience, they can come back anytime with their family, it will get more contracts. What we see for the most engagement, I can't really see my board anymore, but um, from a smart self-tour standpoint, when it's integrated with actually everybody here on stage, the panel, alarm.com, it's installed, professionally installed by uh, Guardian or something like that. <laughs> okay, there we go, thanks. Um, Lovely Carol Merrill is helping. Oh, yeah. I, it off. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, self-guided tours are able to helpful. trigger all the smart home automation and take advantage of all the technology that's in the house. So <laughs> to mimic sort of like a luxury hotel experience, like I just, I'm at the W. So when I walk in, my name's on the thing, the lights are come on, the sound boops. We can do that with self-guided tours. So as soon as we give them a code, we know when they're in the home, we know who they are, they identified themselves. We can trigger the AC, we can turn on the lights. And we also have some features um, that I'll show you on the next slide called pathfinding, which is a better example of it. So self-guided tours are starting to get implemented even during construction. It is a sales and marketing tool, but we have many of our high volume home builders starting to activate self-guided tours during construction so they can have their teams uh, you know, remove keys. They can go in, uh, they can track their third party trades going in and out. They can track their cleaners going in and out before the home's available for market. When the home is available for sales and marketing, that's what we created uh, EnterNow for. On post-sale, we're actually helping the closing coordinators now. We're seeing many of our high volume builders not have a lot of humans in the field. So even be able to do the closing letter automated into their buy now or reserve now system. Now Self-Guided Tours is giving a code in the actual email so that they can drive to go move into their home. So sort of that last mile of the equation. So Self-Guided Tours is really starting to integrate across the component here. Barrett, you're a really good sport. I do want to focus okay. in on the smart tour versus, because you went through it so darn okay. quickly, but you said 
builders who are using the smart, smart technology throughout, so they come in and they're experiencing some basic home automation, they're getting a higher, they're getting lift on the number of offers on their homes, right? And it Definitely. only makes sense, like when you go to a ho hotel room, like at the Tropicana when I was at IBS and it's just yeah. a dark, moldy room <laughs> that somebody sprinkled an aftershave on the carpet. How do you Didn't feel about that? <laughs> well, I think it got torn down <laughs> shortly there. Sound goes, yeah. Late hotel booking. But, but if you, you walk in and the TV's on and the lights are on and the HVAC's running yeah. and then there's music and we can't cook chocolate chip cookies for people, yeah. but we could give them a lot of great experience. Why wouldn't they experience that in a much more positive way yeah. and be more interested in buying the home? It's just, it's just common sense real estate showing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. We have a simple way in our platform as they go in, they're inside the home and they're leaving. They can submit an offer, talk to the salespeople. We definitely, some stats that I just sort of crunched for this thing is that 22% of our offers, we definitely saw a big increase in sort of our, our home builders that leveraged their technology for some of these smart home automations during their tours. So it's definitely an aha moment or a wow experience for home shopper. Builders compete against each other, but this is night and day difference besides resale. They can tour it on demand, they can come back anytime. They walk into like a luxury experience just going into seeing an empty house virtually sometimes where it's just that, it just has smart home products. Um, the last thing I didn't touch on was um, rentals. So as more and more of our home building clientele, we have we work with about 150 plus home builders. Uh, more and more of them have rental divisions as well. So self-guided self tours is very prevalent in the rental space. And uh, Entry Now, we also cover SFR and Build to Rent now as well. So uh, for leasing and for when the resident's there, they can use a resident application as they move out. Then you reset the codes, then it's under maintenance, and you know you just keep the whole cycle going. And they would get more rental offers if they had the smart home technology yeah. there too, right? <laughs> All right, we, get, we, we gotta yep. keep going, but we gotta get Alan's quick take, and then Adrio, you gotta get up here and we need to go fast on your stuff, yeah. okay? okay? I'm sorry, we're, no, I'm we're sorry, good. I totally mismanaged this panel. It was just- <laughs> Too much fun. It's too much fun. Yeah. Adria, thank you for coming up. Um, Alan, uh -huh. do you have any quick commentary on any of that stuff? What do you think about self-guided smart home tours versus dumb home tours? Yeah, I, mean, I would assume the home has to have, uh, you know, for a smart home tour, it needs to have Z-Wave, not Wi-Fi. Uh, both, it can work across all of them. Because a lot of like spec homes don't have Wi-Fi yet. So. Uh, a lot of self-guided tour vendors, we bring in the Wi-Fi. We have uh, LTE routers, uh, different LTE Z-Wave hubs. So, you know, they're sort of DIY or they're professionally installed by a vendor. So the idea is that, you know, a lot of the self-guided tour is that we have to provide connectivity somehow, some way into these homes, even for spec homes. So we're definitely seeing a trend where people are having like lightly furnished specs where they're not investing as much in their model home technology, where they have different floor plans um, because home shoppers definitely want to tour the homes that they're going to buy. And they definitely know the model process is quite uh, a lot of sales pressure. So. He, he has a lot of knowledge and information. And he said, Adria, we got to, we, we. Take us home, Adria. Take us home. <laughs> I will We're starting home. when we should have ended. So whatever you can do to consolidate will get us in less I'll trouble. Be, I'll okay? be brief. All right, well, I appreciate you guys bearing with me for the, the, the next five minutes. Um, so as Madison mentioned, Alarm.com is a cloud-based software platform. And essentially what we do is we integrate all of the different smart home devices into a one app platform. So Alarm.com, we were founded in the year 2000. We've seen significant growth since then. We're in over 60 countries nationwide, and we have about 11,001, with April included and Guardian, uh, service providers nationwide. And then we also um, are a little bit over 1,800 employees, which are mostly based out of our headquarters in Northern Virginia. So Alarm.com at our core, we are based off of life safety, but we have evolved into a number of different facets, including wellness, access control, we have a commercial solution, video monitoring and automation. And so what builders really like about our platform is that we can impact their bottom line, as you heard from Madison, but then your buyer and your potential home buyers are getting all those shiny objects that they can access from a web browser or a mobile app. So Alarm.com has three pillars of success that I believe differentiates 
our platform from other competitors in the market. The number one being our stance on data privacy and security. And so even though we've got over 300 billion data points just in the last year alone, we're not selling any of that data to third parties. Um, so instead, we're really keeping all of that data in-house to make better market decisions, analyzing them to um, you know, see what we should be integrating with and what we should be working on next. And so with that, we are SOC 2 compliant. We have data redundant or we have redundant data centers, and then we also hire ethical hackers. So essentially we hire a group of people to poke holes in the alarm.com platform. That way, you know, random people aren't able to hack into the doorbell camera and things like that. Second, we also um, have what we call device interoperability. So with all the moving parts and all of the devices that your home buyers are going to be adding into their home, Alarm.com is ensuring that everything is able to communicate um, effectively and securely without any um, outside threats from a security standpoint. And then lastly, again, really staying ahead on um, the cutting edge of technology. So making sure we're integrating with solar, energy, and EV ready appliances. So um, really taking advantage of the energy management services. I hope you guys recognize a couple of the manufacturers on the screen here as alarm.com does pride itself because we do integrate with all of the best in class manufacturers. So we do have a wide range of ecosystem partners that we work with. What we've done is we've tried to take you know, the top two or three out of each product category to make sure that you as a builder, you're not um, having to jeopardize any of existing relationships that you have. And then your home buyer, of course, has that brand um, loyalty and, um, and knowledge that, what that what's going in their home is something that they recognize and like. Throughout the lifetime of the buyer being in the home, they are able to easily expand. So any of these brands that you see on the screen here, alarm.com can easily enter them into the ecosystem. All right, so Madison touched a little bit about community management. And just to reiterate, it is a enterprise dashboard that will allow you all to manage all of your model homes and spec homes from a single login. So the benefit to this is that from one single login, you can now manage user codes, you can turn on and off all the lights, you can um, have thermostat schedules. It's really allowing you to have that awareness and access of what's going on at your home or all of your, your properties, um, wherever you're at. And the huge benefit as well is that it is free of cost for you guys to take advantage of, and it doesn't require Wi-Fi, um, so you're able to utilize it right when whenever the devices are activated. So um, Barrett touched on this earlier, but 64% of home buyers would rather attend or rather show a home if um, they were unattended. And so alarm.com integrates with a number of different um, self-guided tour platforms, Enter Now being one of them. And this does allow your home buyer to um, tour the home without a salesperson being necessarily there. And so this is going to drive a lot more traffic. It's going to generate better leads for your sales team, and then overall create that better customer experience for that demographic of buyers who may not want to have a salesperson present with them. And again, works very seamlessly with the alarm.com platform. And to complement that, we do have something that we call model home activity analytics. So adding that extra layer of reporting capability to your sales team. So ensuring that they're up to date on, um, you know, crowd queuing and monitoring, heat mapping. So understanding where are these people spending the most time when they're at the home and then um, people counting as well. So making sure if you have an open house, an accurate number of um, people is being counted and reported on. So just an extra layer of reporting that is available for you guys to take advantage of. And then lastly, I'll wrap it up with a couple of customer benefits that can help enhance your customer's home buying experience. So the bread and butter of our program is what we call our automation service plan. Your home buyer will have the ability to take advantage of all of the home automation features free of cost for up to 36 months. So for three years, they'll be able to log into the alarm.com app, turn on and off their lights, unlock and lock their front door, 
um, adjust their thermostat all remotely. So these are all really great automation capability that your home buyer will get alongside their new home. And lastly, um, Alarm.com truly is the platform of choice because of multiple reasons, but we've kind of broken it down into four different pillars, if you will. So we are truly future-proofing your home buyer's home because we understand that what they move into on day one isn't necessarily what they're going to want throughout the lifetime. So Alarm.com does have weekly updates where we are continuing to improve our mobile app as well as our web browser. And then we also have, um, you know, targeted ads. So that way, if there's ever any additional things that your home buyer might want to add on to their, um, their home, they'll be able to know that they can do video cameras, doorbells, et cetera. We've got a great app rating. It's user-friendly, very accessible. Um, the customer experience is extremely seamless. And again, we've got a number of different service providers that have that white glove service so that your home buyer is in good hands from the minute they move in um, throughout the lifetime that they're in the home. So I know I ran through that very quickly, um, and I'm sure you guys have questions about what alarm.com can do in terms of profit center. So we are at booth 107. So if you have additional questions, Madison and I will be there all week. Um, and we look forward to talking to you more. All right, great. We are absolutely out of time and then some. Um, I want to thank alarm.com for their sponsorship of the session. I want to thank all of our panelists. We, we could have had more takes from you, Alan, but people can get your takes at the connections reception you're going to be at. And all of these fine folks have exhibits, right? You don't have an exhibit. No, just oh. <laughs> but he's around. But he's around, and can, so, so there, we've got the email addresses up there. Um, that we could probably could have gone for a couple of hours, but thank you again to our panel.